Spoilers! Spoilers everywhere! Link's Awakening. This game has been analyzed to pieces by Zelda fans for almost 30 years, yet it still holds countless secrets hiding around every corner. For instance, did you know that the Switch remake references Splatoon with the blooper statue? Or that the final boss in the original could be killed almost instantly with the boomerang? Sometimes, though, these secrets seem to connect, and after a little research, I have a theory to share. It's a bit hard to explain, and because so much of it can be interpreted differently, I could be totally wrong. But if I didn't think this theory had something to it, I wouldn't be making this video. Let's see if I can put it into words. Are you ready? No? Okay, good, because we're starting. First off, let's take a look at a rather important yet forgettable place on the island, the Seashell Mansion. This mansion is a mysterious little house with a talking tree on each side designed with seashells and some colorful rocks. When Link enters this house, he is greeted by a mysterious voice, known as the Spirit of the Mansion. This spirit tells Link that it has been waiting for one to overcome the darkness, likely referring to the nightmares that have taken over the island. Before getting help from this spirit, though, Link must collect the secret seashells found across the island for various rewards, the most important of which is the Koholent Sword. Finally, after collecting every seashell, this spirit tells Link that it is confident Link can overcome the darkness, its task now complete. Now, that's a lot to unpack right there, so let's start by talking about what exactly this spirit is. I actually did a whole video about spirits recently, but funnily enough, I forgot to point out one of the biggest parts of spirits in the Zelda series. In Zelda, there are more or less two major categories of spirits. The first is made up of spirits like certain dragons, or the light spirits, who are usually set in place to guard Hyrule, as well as help Link when he comes along. These spirits are really old, and tend to linger on for quite some time. The other group includes the spirits of people who have died, but their spirits, for one reason or another, can still interact with the world of the living. All of these spirits have some form of unfinished business, whether it be passing on skills, stopping a blizzard, or fighting Ganon. Typically though, there is a regret attached to this unfinished business, which must be eased before the spirit can move on. The question is, which kind of spirit is the spirit of the mansion? Well, technically you could say it's a dream spirit, since it's on Koholint Island. But even though Koholint Island is a dream, almost everything behaves about how it normally would in good old Hyrule. Some stuff is definitely more dreamlike, such as the talking animals or the giant egg, but for the most part, things are pretty consistent. So this spirit is probably either created by the windfish as part of his dream, or the spirit of someone who died on the island. The problem is, it's really hard to tell based on what we know. It seems to have a distinct purpose, like the dragons or light spirits, even having a mansion dedicated to it. Yet, the way it phrases waiting for one to overcome the darkness, along with having a sword to give Link, and disappearing when its duty is complete, also make it sound like it could be the spirit of a living being that died. Well, what can we do except explore both possibilities? The first one is pretty simple, since we know that the Windfish created Koholent Island and pretty much everything on it. He easily could have made a mansion housing such a spirit who'd strengthen any hero who came to the island. The Southern Face Shrine suggests that a castaway landing on the island wasn't too foreign of a concept, so perhaps the Windfish knew that one day Link would arrive and made the mansion for that purpose. In any case, if the spirit of the mansion was made originally as a spirit, the Windfish was probably responsible. However, that really only makes sense if the Windfish foresaw the nightmares coming too, or else the spirit wouldn't be waiting for someone to overcome the darkness. If that's the case, why would he make a spirit just to strengthen a hero, instead of making a hero? Unless he did. On the other side of the fence, we have the possibility that this spirit once belonged to someone who lived on the island. Now, we really don't know of many deceased residents of Koholent Island except a pink ghost and a rooster. However, if we look at another aspect of the spirit of the mansion, I think it may hint towards the spirit's identity. The spirit is surrounded by secrets. Now, I know you knew that, but just take a look. The trees outside the mansion tell Link secrets in green text, the seashells are called secret seashells, and apparently you can hear whispered secrets by listening to them. 
Now, if only we had a character in the series whose entire purpose revolved around secrets and has clear ties to Link, the hero. Oh wait, we do. Introducing Feyror, the Oracle of Secrets. Feyror, as you may know, has ties to Link, the hero, through courage, the color green, and representing the other Feyror alongside Nehru and Din. Since Courage, Green, and Feyror's sponsorship are basically the identifying factors of a hero in Zelda, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to suggest that the Spirit of the Mansion may have once been a hero. So that's one connection between the Spirit and something that may help identify it, but I don't think that alone is enough to write off the Spirit as a fallen hero, so to speak. So let's dig deeper. We don't have to dig much deeper though before we get hit in the face. By a sword. The Koholint sword from earlier, in fact. This spirit has in its possession a new sword that is on par with the Master Sword in strength. I'm not even joking, the official art for this sword in the Game Boy version is literally the Master Sword from A Link to the Past, but green. Not just anyone owns such a sword. And if perhaps the spirit wielded this sword in life, then there's an even bigger chance that the spirit was once the hero of Koholint Island. I mean, the sword's even called the Koholint Sword, so who better than the hero of Koholint to wield it? Tying into the sword, there happens to be a book in the library called Secrets of the Whirling Blade. It tells of a skill known as the Whirling Blade Technique, which is basically the spin attack. Furthermore, it says that this move was passed down in the family of the hero. It could be that Link somehow influenced the dream to include this book. However, this skill was simply passed down in the Knights Clan to Link, who heard it from his uncle. And Hyrule hadn't seen a hero in a very long time, since they couldn't find one for the Sealing War. I think this book may instead be referring to a certain hero of Koholint, who died long ago, now remembered by his family for his swordsmanship. Finally, this owl statue gives Link a vague message. The Windfish sleeps long, the hero's life gone. I think this statue could be hinting at a hero who failed to oppose the nightmares, and as a result, the Windfish has been unable to wake up, thus sleeping long. We actually know that the Windfish slept long, as he says so at the end of the game. This quote could mean a lot of things though, so take it as you will. So just to summarize, I think that long ago there was a hero on Koholint Island, one who died opposing the nightmares when they entered the Windfish's dream and the hero's spirit lingered on, waiting for someone to eventually come put an end to the nightmares once and for all. When Link arrived, the spirit tested his perseverance by making him collect the secret seashells scattered across the island, perhaps required to restore his energy or something of that sort. When Link proved his courage, the spirit gave him the Koholint sword, and after getting every shell, the spirit had no doubt left that Link could oppose the darkness, finally fading away. Or the spirit is Zonai, because swirls. So that's my crazy theory. Do you think there might be something to this? Or does this all sound ridiculous and not worth considering at all? Or is this whole video... a dream? Let me know in the comments, because if I spent two weeks working on a dream, I really need a better hobby. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time you're in the Legend Zone.